Hello and welcome back everyone. So we continue our journey on the quest of figuring out what drives people, what is motivation. And in the last video, which was based on the content theorist, we learned about four people who had their own say on what is it that drives people. And they mostly focused on identifying what needs people have. That was the content theorist. Today, we will talk about the other type of theorist called the process theorist. And this is where the, uh, we will introduce two more. So further to the four we've already learned, two more. So in total, six motivation theories in total. So let's get cracking. So the first of these process theories is by this guy called David McClelland. And Mr. David McClellan wrote a book called The Achieving Society. And in that book, he identified three basic motivators, three things that drives people to work harder, meaning towards motivation. And he divided that into three categories. So he said, look, any worker who's in at work is looking for three things. They are eventually, they even, their goal is one of any one of these three things. What are these things? Number one, people work for power. Number two, people want to work for achievement. They want to do more, get places, be rewarded. And finally, a need for affiliation. Wanting to be loved, wanting to belong to a group, meaning to the business. So what he said was at the end of it all, People work for three things. Either it's for power, it's for achieving their personal goals and going ahead in their careers, or just wanting to be part of a bigger group, which we know as affiliation. And we're going to talk about each of these in a little bit more detail. What does it mean? How do you gauge what l type of need each individual worker has? So three categories, right? We need for power, need for achievement, need for affiliation. But that's not all. He said that among all of these, there will be one that will be more dominant in everyone. So meaning, can you take yourself for example, when you decide to go to work, and you have just come back from a university, uh, you probably learned a lot, spent a lot of money, so you wanna make that, make, put it to good use. And you probably what you want is you want to translate that into some sort of achievement, getting a nice job, doing well in that. So some people may want achievement as their main driving force. For others is the need to want to control people, power. Or for some people, the most important thing is they want to be team players, be liked by groups and just have a s nice social side to their work. And that is the key factor in this whole theory that one of these needs will be more dominant than the other one. And of course, how, how do you develop that? It's over a period of time, the kind of experiences that you have, the kind of personality type you have will often have a big say in the type of need will be more, which will be more dominant for you. So let's look at each of these in a little more detail. What does it mean? What kind of person should you picture when you hear the need for power, achievement, or affiliation. So now that we've developed a basic understanding of what Mr. McClellan had to say, we want to see what does it mean when he says need for power or achievement or affiliation? What kind of person are you thinking of? What are the traits of such workers? So when you think of need for power, think about these things. These are people who want to control others, who want to influence the decisions of others, and also who want to decide the future of subordinates and other employees. So these are people who would always want to be in a position where they are in charge. They will always, not always, they will often argue. And when I say argue, I do not mean it in a negative sense. Arguments can be positive. They can be used to get to better uh, problem solving. Uh, so that's something that you can expect from these people that they will put up a fight and give you a fair argument to whatever you have to propose. They like competition. 
They have, if you put them against two managers, one against the other, they will always compete. One of them want to outdo the other one, which will eventually be good for the company as well. And they work well when they're given very specific targets, goals to achieve. So when you see all of these qualities, you know that this is a person that has a need for power and that's something that they want to quench with that type of job that they can get. So need for power is these characteristics in an employee. And when we talk about need for achievement, there's a different set of characteristics, different traits that you will find in an employee who's looking for achievement. And those are that these people are encouraged by challenging work. They will always give themselves more to do so that they always feel that they are being challenged and their jobs are enriched by more difficult tasks being assigned to them. Also, they take risks, but calculated risks. They won't just go in head first without thinking about things. They will take risks, but of a calculated nature. They can often work alone because they feel that they can get the best out of themselves if they are being left by themselves to figure things out and they will always appreciate feedback. So give it straight to them, tell them what was good, tell them what was bad and they will appreciate and whatever feedback they get, they will try to incorporate that in their uh, actions going forward. So if a person has a need for achievement, these are the things you will see in, in him or her. And finally, the need for affiliation. Something that I think I relate more closely to among these three. I think this is the more dominant motivator for me. And don't mean to boast, just, just a fact. <laughs> anyway, so uh, need for affiliation is basically the kind of people who like to belong to the group, meaning that they want to be liked by everyone in the company. They want to have a social element. They want to they meet after work. They want to discuss things openly and frankly at work, of course, uh, without crossing certain boundaries, of course. So this is for people who like the social side to things. They want to work with others. They want to collaborate rather than compete. So collaboration or competition is definitely a goal for these guys. And they don't like undue risk, unnecessary risk. If they know the outcome for something, only then would they go ahead with it. So that's the sort of person you would see, these characteristics you wouldn't see in a person which is looking for affiliation. So remember that among everyone, and I want you to give this a thought uh, for yourself, which is the more dominant of the three? Are you the one for power, for achievement, or for your affiliation? And do let me know through our community board. So number six on our list is Victor Room's expectancy theory. And if you ever forget about him, just think of a motorcycle. Room, room. <laughs> anyway, so Mr. Victor Room, in his theory on what motivates and drives people, what makes them more motivated to do more for the business, is actually divided into three parts. And he says that it's the combination of these three, meaning that expectancy, which is the first one, instrumentality and valence together will form the motivational force needed to drive the entire workforce forward. So it's upon us to then understand what these three parts individually are first and then how they combine to form a motivated workforce. So let's begin with expectancy which is the first of these sections and expectancy is the simple belief that a business needs to instill in the workers that if you put in more effort, you will get better at the job and your performances will improve. And if the worker has a, pos a positive sense of things, now I will also quote this here, that Mr. Room believes in the idea that people consciously when they're given choices, when they're given alternatives, options to choose from, they will always take pleasure over pain. I mean, right? That's understandable, you wanna have it easy. But you have to make people believe that should you put in the effort, should you work hard for it, and you, if it will result in your job being better, your performance improving, it will lead to a greater reward in the end. So in the first instance, the business has to make 
an environment where the workers are able to put in their best effort so that their best performances can come through. And that will come in the shape of the training that the business provides, any facilities or equipment that might have helped the, uh, the worker to be get better at their jobs or any support, you know, just, just a manager who's able to guide you and coach you through your career would provide that sort of environment that a worker needs to put in the effort that will lead to greater rewards. And then the second part of it, which is instrumentality, states that you also have to make it obvious for the worker that better performance will get you that pleasure that you desire. Meaning the desired outcome for you, which could be uh, money, could be recognition, could be a corner office, a company car, club membership, golf, perhaps. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Anyway, so you, what, whatever one desires, the, way the business has to make the connection in the mind of the worker that until you have the better performance, you won't get the desired result that you want. And that could be the bonuses that you want, the promotions that you want, so all of that. So there's two sides to it, right? So far we've seen that how the business plays a part and then what the worker does in order to get their desired outcome, which is could be money, could be something else for others. Now, a business cannot form this connection until they understand what drives an individual. Right? Like, of course, you are different from your friend, your friend's different from other people, I am different from you. So we all have our own uniqueness, our own person. And everyone is driven by different things. So before assigning the outcomes to better performance, you first need to understand for an individual worker what drives them. Why are they here? What is the main motivator for them? And that's what Wellen says. Identify what workers desire. Until and unless you take the time and the effort to have an understanding of what people are looking for, you will not be able to provide the connection between their desired outcome and the fact that you want that better performance coming from them. So understand what they're looking for, money, uh, recognition, and all the other things we've just discussed so far. So it's a combination. It's a whole process that you have to understand that I first ask the worker, or not just ask, really, just get an understanding, emotional Im intelligence, use some of that to gain an understanding of what your workers want. Then make them believe that if you want that desire, if, if you want your desired outcome, that pleasure over pain, then you have to work hard. And working hard only comes in putting in more effort. And as long as that connection is established in the mind of the worker, and as long as the business is providing their support through training and facilities and etc., the workers will feel motivated and only then would the company be able to achieve their overall objective together. That is Mr. Victor Broom's expectancy theory. And the last. So in total, there are six. Two for the process theorists, which were Mr. McClellan and Victor Broom, which we've covered in this chapter.